बहुत शांति प्रजावत है और मेरे गांव का नाम है खोखरा भंडेरगढ़ और जिला है बिलवाड़ा नानी दरोगा मेरे गांव में रहती है वो दो साल से ड्रग आती नानी बारह साल की है अभी तक I've seen girls in villages for many, many years now. They're one of the first people to wake up. They cook, they clean, they take the goats out to graze, they work in the fields, they come back, they do household work, and are one of the last people to go to bed at night. By the time she hits her puberty, she's married. She'll have her first child by the age of 14, 15, and then that's her life. पहले जब हम घर पे आए तो उसके पिताजी और माताजी ने बिल्कुल साफ मना कर दिया कि हमारी लड़की ना खाने में है लेकिन हमारी समस्या ये है कि हमारे को वहाँ कुछ नहीं मिलता यदि घर पे रहेगी तो बकरियाँ चलाएगी और हमारा घर का काम भी ऐसे खाना बनाना बर्तन साफ करना कुएं से पानी लाना हम खेत पे काम करते हैं तो हमारे लिए खाना लेके आना तो घर पे तो हमारे को बहुत ही फायदा होता है It had always disturbed me the patriarchal issues that women face and the gender discrimination. And I started looking at the issue of gender sort of extensively. I realized that India had the highest number of out of school girls anywhere in the world. We have the highest number of child brides anywhere on the planet and the highest number of women and girls in sexual and other forms of slavery. So when we speak of gender discrimination and gender inequity, this is pretty much the epicenter. Uh, just in the state of Rajasthan, where we are right now, 68% of the girls are child brides. 15% are married below the age of 10. Now you say that girls are not going to study, but my parents have never said that they are not going to study. So I have done some of the things that I have done in the school in Ujjmadimik school. I want to be a teacher and I want to be a teacher because I want to study my children. मेरा बहुत ही अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि छोटे-छोटे बच्चों को पढ़ाना और उनके साथ रहना मेरे को मेरे को बहुत ही अच्छा लगता है। I decided to set up Educate Girls and it's a non-profit to work in critical gender gap areas where the problems for the girl child in terms of education are the worst, rural, tribal, remote areas, and to very simply find every single girl who's out of school. Make sure she's staying in school, and finally, and most importantly, make sure she's learning. Our first step is to find a young, educated, passionate individual who's going to take this battle forward in their village. And these are our community workers called Team Balika. Today we have 8,000 between the ages of 18 to 25. Some of them are the most educated people in their village, and they really want to see a change. मेरे को ऐसा इसलिए लिया लगा क्योंकि मैं पढ़े लिखी हूँ तो मैं मैं ये चाहती हूँ कि मेरे गांव की सभी लड़कियाँ पढ़े और ऐसी एक भी लड़की नहीं रहे जो अनपढ़ हो मैं चाहती हूँ कि मेरे गांव के बच्चे या बच्ची सब पढ़े और पढ़ पढ़ लिखकर वो आगे जाकर कुछ बने राम राम our work is to do team balika, to do two 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 to do two. Now I know that when Nani is completing her education, for each year she stays in school, her marriage is delayed. She will have children later. If they have children later, they will be less likely to die in childbirth. She has children later, her children will be more likely to survive. And for each year of education, her household income will increase by 10 to 15%. You know, when I look at Nani, and I think that she wasn't going to school because people believe that a goat is an asset and a girl is a liability, you know, she is actually the biggest asset that our country has. 
So the gold dividend, as the World Bank calls it, you know, is like the best investment you can make. And the education is what will really help Nani and girls like her to reach their full potential. You know, we've grown so rapidly. Um, we've gone from 50 schools to 12 and a half thousand schools, and every year my budget doubles. Where do I go find that money? There's only so much philanthropic capital available, and our goal is that we want to be able to go and close the gender gap in 15 of the worst districts in India. That's four million children a year. So our vision is big, but where do you find that money? We know we're faced with a huge funding gap right now to achieve the sustainable development goals. We need to be trying new ways to bring new and better money to the sector. And the Optimist Foundation aims to identify good programs for children focused in the areas of health, education, and child protection so that our clients can give to programs that are impactful. What's exciting about the Development Impact Bond is that it incentivizes outcomes, yet delivers an incredibly favorable return. There's three core partners in a development impact bond. The implementing organization, and in this case, it's Educate Girls. The second core partner is the investor. And in this case, UBS Optimist Foundation is the investor, putting up the working capital so that Educate Girls can do what it does best, which is get girls into school and improve learning outcomes. Then the third core player is the outcome payer. In this case, the Children's Investment Fund Foundation. When the outcomes are achieved, the Children's Investment Fund Foundation repays the investor with interest. For SIF, the Development Impact Fund is tremendously exciting because we saw it as a way of reducing the amazing amount of heavy lifting that we do with a traditional investment evidence reviews and due diligence and monitoring and working very closely daily with the, the implementer. With a DIB, our expectation is that we could eliminate so much of that and just pay for what we care about the most, what SIF is here for, which is to get outcomes for children in, in the countries that we care about. This is something that a Team Malika member said to me once. My education is the only thing that's mine. Nobody can rob it, no flood can wash it away, no fire can burn it. It's mine and it will be mine forever. We train Shanti on creative learning and teaching techniques. These are activity-based um, learning techniques to make the classroom really exciting, but to teach children Hindi, English, and math. parents <laughs> This is the first development impact bond and we funded it as a pilot. We're testing this and it's been very successful. Tremendous interest. We think that this is something that has potential to be scaled, to bring new money to global challenges. Today it's education, tomorrow it could be healthcare. But what it's really teaching us that social issues are very, very complex. That we have to move away from this input financing 
to outcomes-based funding. Make it multi-year, make it flexible, give more power to people like Shanti and people on the ground to actually create the solutions. When people invest through a development impact bond, they know exactly what they're buying. They're buying very specific outcomes. Typical investors are interested in returns. More and more investors are interested in social impact too. This has the amazing capability of bringing the two together. They're able to invest in social impact and get the returns that they were expecting to get perhaps from traditional market investments. So clearly this is a new way of solving the problem of social impact investment. You can't go wrong with that. मुझे पढ़ाना इसलिए अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि जो बच्चा पढ़ कर जो बच्चा शिक्षित है कोई भी टीचर पढ़ाता है तो वो अच्छी तरह से पढ़ाता है और वो बच्चा शिक्षित है तो वो शिक्षित है तो कोई अपनी जिंदगी आसानी से जी सकता है In the last eight and a half years, we have brought back over 110,000 out of school girls back into the school system. And these are girls like Nani, who were sitting at home, who were not allowed to go to school, and making sure that now they can attend and they can learn. And my village has changed. Again, this name is Roshan Kiran, who is not a girl in my village. You know, children are being educated, and outcomes are improving. But most of all, to have young, passionate individuals like Shanti. Um, today we have almost 8,000 on the ground, and that's an army of young people. And that's going to be a different world that they will create for us, a much more equitable world for both boys and girls. S C C คือศูนย์ฝึกอบรมการโรงแรมและพัฒนาคารนะครับผมชื่อเต็มก็คือ Hospitality and Catering Training Center นะครับผมโปรแกรมนี้ก่อตั้งขึ้นเพื่อช่วยเหลือเด็กชายแดนครับเด็กที่อยู่ติดชายแดนแล้วก็เด็กที่ยากจนนะครับผม In Thailand there's a distinct lack of hospitality training it tends to be very technical it tends to be very classroom based it really is important that the people going through that training have a practical part and that's one of the aspects from Accor Hotels here in Thailand that we were able to assist substantially, both from an intern point of view and as importantly, if not more importantly, as they finish you to come into the workforce and actually be practically employed. This is Chiang Mai, Thailand's second largest city, known for its rich cultural heritage and good standard of living. For years, it's attracted thousands of migrant workers crossing borders from impoverished neighboring countries, seeking jobs and a better life for their families. But what of the children who accompany them and the effect that this dislocation has on their lives and their education? พ่อมาจากที่ฝังแล้วแม่มาจากที่ไทยใหญ่พ่อแม่ทํางานก่อสร้างเป็นคนทาสีค่ะแม่ก็ทาสีแล้วคราวนี้ก็มาเอากันค
who live with their wives and children in compounds built and run by the contractors. Right now, Sansiri is working on several sites in Chiang Mai. We are one of the largest public developer in Thailand. We run about 100 uh, projects at the same time. ซึ่งดูแลงานของหน่วยงานดีคอนโดไซน์เชียงใหม่ครับปัจจุบันเนี่ยไซต์งานของเราเนี่ยเรามีแรงงานซึ่งเป็นแรงงานต่างด้าวเนี่ยไม่ว่าจะเป็นกัมพูชาเมียนมาหรือประเทศลาวเนี่ยปัจจุบันเนี่ยเรามีแรงงานอยู่ประมาณ400ถึง500คน The reason some of the workers come here because the wages are a little bit higher and of course there are a lot of more infrastructure in this country, a little more freedom in terms of expression. They bring the family also with them and some of them bring the chicken and some of them bring their dogs. But of course they bring their whole livelihood with them. In Thailand there's about 60,000 migrant children related to construction sites, all of which basically are lost and are in deep, deep need of support, attention, protection, um, and structure. They have to adapt to a new culture, adapt to a new way of, of thinking. Actually, they have handicap from the beginning. 12-year-old Mai has been in Thailand for a few years now. He had to leave his extended family and familiarity behind, and it's not always been easy. พ่อพ่อผมมาจากประเทศไทยใหญ่สัญชาติไทยใหญ่พ่อผมก็เป็นคนทํางานอยู่หาเลี้ยงครอบครัวแล้วพ่อแม่แม่ผมก็ทําง
and help them enroll their kids in local schools. ผมเรียนคิดถมก็คือครับเป็นคนใจดีแล้วก็มีคุณครูใจดีแล้วสอนหนังสือชอบว่าพวกวิชานี่ภาษาไทยเนี่ยมันจะง่ายด้วยใช
ครูลาก็จะซื้อของขวัญมาให้แล้วหนูก็เลยแบบดีใจหนูก็จะตั้งใจเรียนอีกต่อไปตั้งใจเรียนทําให้ครูลาครูอะไรทุกคนภูมิใจให้หมดคนที่เขาชอบไปเรียนใช่ไหมครับเขาจะรู้คุณค่าของหนังสือแล้วก็คุณค่าของคนที่ช่วยเราสึกดีใจมากครับที่มีครูคิดทมเข้ามาสอนมาเรียนมารู้แล้วเราก็ดีใจมากครับ